Hi all, I wanted to go over as quickly as I can, but I apologize, this will probably be one of my longer videos, the assignment for um, this week, 3-2, the magazine ad rough, which will be part of your final project. So this will be your layout that you did last week. Um, you'll be laying out your ad um, just as kind of a draft, and then we will be submitting it later for um, peer feedback and of course client feedback aka me um, so what you'll do is you know open that illustrator file that you started last week you'll use your um, photoshop files that you um, put adjustment layers on the masked image that you use any other photos that you've found um, in sourced and applied changes to you can use those as well in fact you know i encourage you to use other images uh, you may find as you're doing your layout that maybe the images that you chose initially didn't work quite as well and that's pretty common in graphic design you know you see an image that you really like and you want to use it and somehow it just doesn't fit your layout so you're free to use other images um, you will want to upload your psd files and your Illustrator file for this assignment. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into this part one milestone. So this will kind of give you the synopsis of what's required for the assignment. Um, for the magazine ad, of course, you're gonna apply photography and color consistent with the, color, the client's existing branding. Um, typography, I am flexible on. Um, you can consider me, as I said, the client. I know that Arial is not the most creative font. I get it. Um, and you are welcome to use other fonts. I will uh, say that with a caveat, though. If you are using fonts that are installed on your system, you will have to package your files so I can view those fonts. So I'll go over that a little bit more. I do usually suggest using Adobe fonts because they um, work across all Adobe platforms. You don't have to download anything. You only activate the, um, the typeface in Adobe fonts and it applies across all of your um, Adobe software. So I'll demonstrate that as well. So of course you will select prepare your um, appropriate imagery files, your uh, photographs, and um, you'll use the tools within Illustrator and Photoshop. And just to clarify, so there's no um, confusion, I do sometimes have students that submit the ad layout in Photoshop. You are using Illustrator for the layout. Um, what to submit here? You should submit a zipped file containing the magazine ad rough as a layered Adobe Illustrator file any layered Photoshop files of high resolution images that have been processed um, and used in the magazine ad design. And this is where those screenshots that I keep talking about come in, a PDF of numbered and labeled screenshots taken during the, the design process. So it doesn't have to be a lot, um, you know, four to five would do. Um, you, you do want to continue to document your steps throughout the process, just to include in your final reflection in this course. So that's why we do those screenshots so you can explain your design process in, in clear detail. So here's what you start with. So this is the layout that I worked on last week and demonstrated for you. Um, so I have the colored background in there. I have my image that um, I masked and I have the logo. So of course, you know, as you get started on this, you may find that the way you have things laid out in here aren't necessarily going to work for you. Usually what I like to do is just kind of move things off the canvas and you can do this however you like. I don't want to have this background layer here, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to make sure my guides are locked. So I don't accidentally move that and then I want to grab my masked image and pull that over here. So basically what I'm going to start out with is my background. And I have an image in mind and this is one of the images that I put my adjustment layers on in one of the previous assignments and it is this 
speech image. So I'm going to go ahead and place this right into my layout. And I have this size roughly so it will fit with, you know, those bleed areas that I showed you last week. So here is my bleed area. Here's the edge of my page. If this is a little bit confusing to you and you're not sure what the edge of the page actually is, you can always go to view and click on trim view. And that will show you what your page actually actually looks like. And you can toggle that off and on just by clicking trim view again. So we have my background layer added in. And now I want to add some text. So a few things that you should consider while you're working on your ad is having a compelling headline to grab attention, um, some offer text, maybe a little bit of body copy. I don't think you really need a ton. And of course you wanna have contact information. So to start with, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer and we'll just call this text. I'm gonna go ahead and add all of my text to this layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my headline. Now, I do wanna point out, you notice that I drew a text box and I'll show you why. You can also add text by just clicking and simply typing. So I want my headline to be And I will copy that over here. Now I'm going to make both of these about 60 points for now. So when I draw out my text box, so it, when I use my text tool and I actually click and draw out a box like that, when I go to resize it, it will move the text with it. So it'll either hyphenate it or you know push it to another line. Now with just clicking in and adding text, if I were to try to resize it, that's what happens. So it's important to always draw your text box out. I often see students that don't realize this and then you know they submit text that looks like this and you want it to look as, um, readable as you can make it without kind of squishing the text in and, and having the spacing um, look off. So that's why you draw out that text box. So as I mentioned, you are welcome to use other fonts here. And I do suggest using Adobe fonts. So if you go to fonts.adobe.com, you have a Creative Cloud subscription with this class. So these fonts are free to use. And just to demonstrate very quickly, um, say I found I find a font that I want to use, this Portofino. I'm going to click into this. And it has a few different styles. You'll find there's fonts that have a few different styles and weights and others that, you know, maybe just have one. So let's say I like the extra light. I'm going to go ahead and click add font. So it tells me the fonts are added to my Adobe apps. If I go over here and start typing in Portofino, you can see that it comes up. So there's no downloading anything, unzipping files, installing anything. And the bonus to doing it this way is if you, um, you know, are passing files to somebody else, say you're sending this to a commercial printer, typically a commercial printer will have the same type of software you do if you're using Adobe, and they can easily just activate those fonts. It'll, it'll prompt them if they don't have the fonts to activate them. Now, if I were to use a system font here and I pass that over, I would have to package my file by going to File, 
package and that will put all my um, images and fonts into a folder. Now with Adobe font, fonts, you don't have to do that. So that kind of eliminates that step. So that's why I always kind of mention Adobe fonts being um, a really nice kind of industry standard font to use. So I did find another font and you'll notice in my, um, my font listing here, any of these little clouds, those are all Adobe fonts that I have installed on my system. So you can see I have quite a few, but I want to use this Dazzle Unicase, which is another Adobe font. So I'm going to use Hello Relaxation as my headline. I'm going to make sure it's within my margins. So if you haven't added your margins in here, make sure you do that so you don't have text that sort of runs off the side of the page. And then I'm going to make hello just a little bit bigger. And I would like the thin font for this one. So I'm also going to go ahead and add in the brand color. And you'll notice in my swatches, I do have the purple and the green, and that's because I'm using the purple and green logo, and I have that imported, so it automatically copied in those colors when I pasted in my logo. If you want to grab these colors, just open the style guide. You can just go ahead into the color palette, select all these. I'm just holding the shift key as I click and select and you can copy and paste and you'll see how they popped up over here in the swatches palette. So now I have all those brand colors. I also want to grab this lighter purple that's used just because I, I think it's a nice accent color. So I'm going to grab the lighter logo as well and just have this in case I want to swap things out. I'm going to click into the text and then that comes up, up over here. I'm going to go ahead and add this as a new swatch. So it'll add that purple, that lighter purple in there. So I'm going to make the hello relaxation text, the dark purple, just for contrast. Now I have a series of three images that I want to use within my layout. And I'm going to make a layer for those. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this one images. And some of these may look familiar. Um, this one where we recolored the woman's bathing suit. I found this spa picture and I added some adjustments here to make the, uh, the sheets look a little bit more like that amethyst bay green and then this one which i obviously added in some purples too so what i did here is i cropped all of these to a square so just using my crop tool i had it set up here as a one by one square and i made sure that i sized them all about the same size so they're all about five by five inches of course the resolution is set at 300 so each one of these is sized about the same size because I want them to be pretty uniform in size when I bring them into Adobe Illustrator. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and place those on my images layer. I'm going to file and place. I got to navigate back to my folder and I'm going to select all of those and place them. So what I'm thinking here is kind of placing them across maybe something like this, but of course I don't want them to be quite this big. I'm just going to go ahead and select them all and resize them holding the shift key. So I want them to be small enough to fit across the page 
without overlapping too much and without taking up too much of this negative space that I have here that I'm hoping to use for some, some copy. So I'm just going to sort of spread them out here. And then I'm going to maybe try tilting them and see how that looks. And then I'm going to click again on all of these and I'm going to add a slight drop shadow here. So I'm going to affect stylize drop shadow. And I have black as my color. You can change this if you click into that color and you can select your color swatches if you'd like. Um, we'll see what this dark purple looks like. Kind of adds a nice effect. So it makes these images look like they're sort of popping off the, the page. So we can move these around sort of accordingly as we continue to adjust. But I'm, for now, I'm going to go back to this text layer. And I want to add in the second part of my, my text. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out another text layer. And of course, I don't want this to be quite as big. We're going to try maybe about 24. And I'm going to go with a slightly more readable font. Body copy, like I said, Arial is great. I'm going to use a font that is also an Adobe font called Sophia Pro. And for this, I'm going to say, look today and get a free spa package of your choice on us. So this is a nice, clean, easy to read font. And I'm going to place this right under that headline. And now this is where we can sort of see where we need to adjust some, some things. And this text. Maybe I can choose the Pantone black. Or we can see what the white looks like. Sometimes white just looks a little cleaner, but it depends on the background. I actually like the black a little bit better for contrast. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and move my logo back in. I think I'm going to use the purple logo maybe make it just a little bit bigger. But of course, the one thing we do need is contact info. And where we can grab that is right within the style guide. And we can use this address line by copying and pasting it. Of course, I want to paste it in the text layer. And usually with this, I like to simplify this quite a bit. I don't think we need the full address. I usually like to just use the St. Thomas. And maybe put the phone number and the website on one line with a bullet symbol in between. So to add a bullet symbol, I'm going to go to type insert special character symbol bullet and it adds that little bullet dot and i'm going to go ahead and choose that sophia pro font that i used for my other copy and we'll try this in white i'm going to move this right underneath the logo here at the bottom of course i'm going to make sure it's within my margins And I'm going to make sure my logo aligns well with it. Now I want to add my flip-flop layer back in. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pull this over. And I do want this to sort of overlap just a little bit and it's fine if it's bleeding off the side of the page a little bit. The one thing that you want to avoid obviously is the text and logo bleeding off the page. And because it's behind this photo, I am just going to go ahead and move this layer above that images layer. And again, with the flip flops, I am going to add a slight drop shadow. But this time I'm going to make it the Pantone black for a little added contrast. And then again, we can continue to sort of adjust and see what works and what doesn't. Now, the main thing that I do notice here, and you'll find this as well with the logo, it's tough to find a logo that really stands out against some of the backgrounds um, because it is an interesting color palette. And um, to remedy that, I'm going to create sort of a gradient that we'll use at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and create another layer right above the background layer. And I'm going to create a gradient. And to do this, I'm going to go ahead and just draw out a rectangle. And you'll notice in your swatches, there is a fading sky gradient, which is nice because it goes from blue to transparent. And to adjust the way that gradient is going, you can go to the gradient tool and you'll notice it's going from this way to this way but I want want it to go from the bottom up and I'm not going to take it quite to the top of my rectangle I'm just gonna leave it at that and then I'm gonna go ahead and click and fill this color with my green swatch So now we can adjust the size of this a little bit into the background. I'm going to pull this up so it's just right at my bleed lines. And I'm going to add a slight drop shadow to my logo. I want it to be very light, so I'm going to adjust the opacity to about 50 and see how that looks. Sometimes there are brands that don't like drop shadows added to their logos. Um, I've worked with some brands like that, and I've worked with brands that don't mind. So anything to make the logo a little bit more readable tends to be okay. And for this text, because we're using that lighter green, I'm going to change this back to purple and we'll see how that looks. So from here, you can keep adjusting if you'd like. Um, I think what I will probably most likely do is make my headline a lot bigger just because there's a lot of negative space up here. Um, I could maybe even center this text. Maybe move it to three lines. And like I said, make this just a little bit bigger. I'm going to use my free transform tool, hold the shift key.
And I think I'll have to move this back to two lines. So you can see it, it can definitely be a work in progress as you figure out how you want your layout to look. But definitely, you know, have fun with it. Be creative. Um, you know, play with fonts, play with colors, look for additional images, you know, other other things that you can try. And of course, as always, if you have any questions about any of that, just let me know. Um, you will save this as an Illustrator file. So I'm going to late, I'm going to rename this my Add Rough. Save it as an Adobe Illustrator file with all the layers over here intact. And then again, put that in a zip file with your Photoshop files um, and your PDF of your screenshots. As always, I think I mentioned this in the last assignment, but if you have images that are not embedded, now is a good time before you add them to your zip folder to embed these images. So you'll notice my flip-flops are embedded from the last time. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure these are embedded as well. Just go one by one and embed each one. This will make your file size a little larger, but otherwise you again would have to package that file. So once my images are embedded, I'm gonna go ahead and save it again. I will add it to that zip folder with my Photoshop files and my screenshots and um, you will submit that in the assignment area. And like I said, if you have any questions, just let me know.